Hey everyone! In this video I just want to kind of give my thoughts on GraphQL and why I think it's quite cool and popular to the GraphQL community. I attended a conference in Berlin, the GraphQL Europe conference, and I met some of the guys from GraphQL there. They were kind enough to show me through their platform in their office and I was quite impressed by their setup. GraphQL is a backend for mobile and web developers. It allows you to host your schema, your files, your database in the cloud and connect your front-end uh, app, website, uh, mobile app, whatever it may be, um, to, to their endpoints. And they, they support uh, regular old GraphQL endpoints, they have a relay endpoint, and they also have subscriptions as well. And I think it's a really cool space to be in right now. There are alternates to GraphQL, but GraphQL seem to be providing the most um, up-to-date examples with Relay, Relay Modern and um, Apollo Client. Uh, they're really working hard, you can tell by their presence on social media. They've got a, a Slack group and a forum. They're really quite active in there and there's a lot of guys on their team who work hard to produce these examples and give support to the community. I myself have been stuck on a few occasions with just GraphQL in general and the GraphQL team have really gone above and beyond to help me out really and I think that's an amazing thing to have. Um, they don't have to help me with a problem writing a schema but you know they spent the time to do that and I think if anyone's doing that in their own time you know these guys do it sort of 9, 10, even 11 o'clock at night um, and it's it's really uh, humbling to see that because you, there's not a lot of companies that have employees who want to do their their very best and go going above and beyond but i think it's it's really cool for graphcool and they're, they're they're doing a lot of cool stuff so i just want to walk through their website right now um this is their home page it just gives you kind of an example they've got a, a command line interface tool which you can just create a new graphql backend from your terminal you haven't got to use the web platform console in any way um which is really quite awesome if you're super super technical um you know, it's been used by some popular guys um, here. Their homepage obviously shows you a quick example. Again, this kind of just gives you an overview of um, GraphQL and, you know, the request and the response. But this is kind of all baked in. You get filters, uh, pagination, and mutations. They're all kind of baked in in a way. All you have to do is define your schema and they do a lot of the uh, the work in the background for you, so it's really quite nice. Um, and if you know if you don't have the time to create your own uh, GraphQL backend, this is a perfect uh, tool to use. So it's quite easy um, to get started, create an account. Um, Lee Byron, one of the co-creators of GraphQL, is really behind this product as well. Um, there's a lot of integrations for it. Um, it is it is free to get started with, um, but there are paid options as well. So kind, you know, it's it's a really cool thing and there's obviously a lot of people uh, shouting about it. You can find out more on their website. Um, let's just dive into their pricing page. So as a developer, uh, you get free 250 meg database, which is quite a lot if you're, if it's just a side project, a ha hack project, whichever it is. Um, it's quite a lot of space. I'm running a large production database and it's it's less than 10 meg. So it's quite a cool cool, uh, cool amount of free space you get there. Obviously two seats so you can get two developers who can manage that database and 100 requests per month. That's uh, again really really reasonable. You get community support as well but you know I don't even I didn't even have an account before I was in their Slack group and asking for support so those guys are really helpful anyway. Uh, I don't think you'll ever You'll never have any complaints about their support. So we get onto the paid plan. Obviously, it goes up depending on the, the requests per month and their database size. Uh, and the type of support you get. If you're paying, you know, huge amounts of cash every month, um, you've got a big app running, then you know you're gonna maybe need some one-on-one -on -one support, phone support. If you know if your database is slow or it's down or or you have a problem there. Uh, you know these guys will will obviously always be there for you. Um, you get file storage. There is a file API where you can upload files. Um, and like I said before, there are um, filters and um, 
uh, you know, things that you can use with, within your schema. Uh, there are integrations as well. So authentication uh, uses auth o. Um, that's quite cool. There are a few other mutate uh, integrations which I'll just quickly go over in their console. Um, a couple of FAQs on their site which uh, goes over. Their documentation is unreal. Um, I've never seen anything like it. The amount of detail that's gone into here. Uh, if we just want to have a look about a GraphQL schema, you can see how one is built. We can look at the different types. They go into detail about that um, and how it works on their platform. You know, different all the different types that you'd expect right in your own GraphQL server. These guys have got it for you. Uh, migrations. Again, if you're update in a schema you obviously need to migrate the existing data to the new data structure so migrations are built in uh, you can you can do that as well which is which is really cool um, that's quite a lot of work if you've got your own back end um, if you're not using if you're using a NoSQL database for example you've kind of got to maintain that yourself if you're using something like um, Postgres and the SQLize uh, node module you can write mutations, but I think with GraphQL, if you're just updating the schema, it it works even better than that. There's 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 you know there's no work involved. If you're using that console, you kind of just define the new schema and how it should transform, and it, it's just magic. Um, I'll, I'll uh, definitely it's definitely worth checking out. Functions are um, now the functions in their console. They've got an old part of their functions, and they've got a new section. Um, but the serverless functions allow you to do things on their server that you would necessarily, you know, sometimes need your own node server to send data to and get it back from. With these guys, you can just host your code in the cloud with them and they'll run your code for you. So if you don't want any back end servers and you want to rely on GraphQL 100%, you probably can. If you wanted to send a welcome email to a customer when they signed up or uploaded a file or the deleted a user or whatever it may be within your schema you can create a serverless function and have it run for that one of the examples that i was looking at recently was when someone created an event we wanted to send them a qr code and a welcome pack with a customized pdf that could be done in a serverless function if you'll have to generate a pdf and attach that to an email i'm sure you know that's something that is this is a, is a great example for what you would sometimes need a custom server for that's something that you could do using a serverless function you can get access to the node modules directory and and use what you like um, obviously they've got a lot of error handling in there um, if you've ever wrote your own graphql uh, server it's quite difficult um, to include every edge case and errors is quite a area which people kind of get stuck on and i myself um, you know i've found many different ways of handling errors and in, in doing it, these guys have got you covered and it's kind of all automated. You'll get a, an error back and this kind of walks you through um, how those errors will look. If you have an invalid email, or something's not uh, valid, uh, you know, something's not unique or taken or whatever it may be, the, the, um, that, that's great there. The integrations, um, it's quite cool. Digits, OAuth0. Um, there's a lot of things in there. Basic email password authentication. Now the only thing with that, the email password at the moment, for that authentication, is you can't. Re there's no way to reset your password. So that's the only thing I think that they're working hard on is things like that, adding additional features to the sort of the groundworks that you have. This is something which yeah, it's great, but it doesn't have that reset password feature just yet. Um, so be a bit careful when you use that. But if you're happy to use Auth uh, Auth Zero, then you know, it's uh, it's in there. You you, you know you wouldn't need that uh, that part. Anonymous authentication as well. Um, if you'd like to provide a demo to somebody, um, or you want to have a demo button on your website, but the, you want to get the real feel as a they were actually using your application, anonymous author is a great tool for that. And instead of again building out your own, these guys have got that covered as well. File management is one of the harder things in Node. If you're uploading to Amazon S3, things like that, you you know you probably experience how difficult that can be with Node or Express or whatever um, backend framework you're using. 
These guys have got it covered. There's an endpoint with GraphQL. If you're using something like Drop Zone, you can once you drag a file in there, you can kick off a callback or a function and you know upload via um, I don't know the Apollo client, for example. There's a few implementations of how to do file uploading with that. Uh, you could just send the file straight to their API um, and they walk you through doing that. And there's a couple of examples, just use some basic fetch. Uh, and an Ajax example, curl, Python, however you want to update files, they've got it all covered. They do have a very, very minimalist uh, image API framework, um, which allows you to crop or resize your images just by passing regular flags on here. You may have used a service in the past called Image uh, IX or Cloudinary. These services, you know, provide a lot more to what this is doing, but this is kind of giving you the basic premises of resizing an image. And it's sometimes it's all you need is if you're placing an image for a news bulletin uh, homepage or in a somewhere else on your site, you kind of just want a snippet of the first image. In there, you you know, you can resize that to whatever you like for whatever page with obviously using GraphQL. Um, so yeah, that's kind of their website. They do blog a lot. There's quite a lot of articles on here. They walk you through creating some really cool examples. They've got a radio, GraphQL radio, which is absolutely awesome. They have some really cool guests on there from Microsoft and Facebook, things like that. So definitely worth subscribing and checking out. Again, their CLI is absolutely unreal. If you'd like to um, you just use a terminal and not use their web interface, uh, you can do that, but I think their web interface is actually really, really cool. So I'm going to pop into their console, and this is just an example project that I've got uh, going, but it's quite a complex setup. And this is kind of what you get by when you sign up, is you get this part on the left, which you can browse your data, you can uh, view permissions, you can do mutation callbacks, integrations and functions, and uh, certainly a lot more. There's a playground as well. So if you, you just want to sort of get started by, um, you know, let's let's do get all users and get their name, we can do that and that's that here. You can create several tabs to create a mutation, create user. There's so much in here that you can do. Um, it's absolutely unreal. And that's an essay again there. There's our error handling. You know what more do you want from a um, from a tool that's that's free to get started with as well. The permissions model is one of the best I've seen. You can create permissions for each individual model, action, user. You can create as many permissions as you like. Oh, it's just it's it's just on it's unreal how great this is. Uh, the next thing is you'll you'll get given uh, an endpoint. Again, subscriptions endpoint. File endpoint, relay endpoint, a simple endpoint. You can just use those endpoints and plug it into your uh, Apollo client or relay client, and away you go. There are enums in here. Um, I don't really use these, but they're quite cool. Um, I don't know what that could be, but um, if you've got something that is, I'll just do a pizza topping for example. Uh, you know, you have cheese or um, you know, mushroom or whatever, um, pop that in there and there's a, um, there, so I made a mistake, <clears throat> never mind, it's not really important, um, the types again, you can create as many types in here as, as possible um, as you'd like and then create a description, again this is provided th through your application and you can use all of these here. Uh, what more can I show you about this console? It's kind of where you do a lot of the nitty gritty configuration of your schema. You probably spend a lot of your time in here, to be honest. I know I certainly do. There we go. We've got. If we click on the name for the user, um, just click on that again because I think I made a mistake. And it's been it's slow today, but um, yep, yeah, name. We can define what type it is. If it's an enum, we can obviously choose from before what that is. Um, if it's a normal object. Uh, is this field required? Yes, no. Um, if it isn't, what's the default string? Because it's a string. If it's a Boolean, then uh, is it true or false? This is really quite cool. Date time. Um, 
you know, pop a day of timing. That's awesome. Like, it's kind of, it's really well done. I haven't really missed anything. It's just, it's really nice. I'll just quickly go over the functions. You can obviously define a server side or request function. They've got current jobs coming, but you can do a lot of your code here. So you can see, um, is it a webhook based function? Or is it something that you've coded? You want to include a module? It's really, really quite awesome. Uh, the, the entire server definitely worth it's definitely worth check checking it out. Um, certainly, don't forget to read the docs to get started. Um, these guys aren't paying me to uh, create this review. I've just used that on a few projects uh, when I was learning GraphQL, and it certainly helped me do that. Um, it's uh, definitely worth checking out. So that's graph.cool. Uh, it's got the thumbs up from me. Um, and I'll give it four out of five stars. Uh, they're, they're using um, quite a lot of um, cool examples and resources. Again, they're feature requests. They're working very hard on it. Uh, there are a few things I'd like to see um, come about, but if you keep an eye on here, you'll see as they're getting worked on and they're quite public about that. They've got a lot of resources and training material, like I, I said, with the, all their examples. Um, it's nothing more really for me to say other than it's an awesome tool and it's something that you should definitely check out if GraphQL is something that you're looking to get started with or even if you're, if you're an expert at creating GraphQL servers but you don't want to waste your time doing that and you want to work on the front end. If, if your team's quite small, you can dedicate more time to the front end and leave the back end to GraphQL. Uh, they are a startup uh, based in Berlin and they're doing some really cool stuff and all of the guys there are really, really nice. So don't ever feel as so though you can't ask them any questions because I'm, I'm certain that they'd be happy to answer any questions that you've got. Um, of course, ask me if you've got any questions. Uh, I've used their service a few times and I quite know how to use their console and I'm on their Slack group. So, you know, you can definitely join that as well. And everyone there is looking, uh, would be more than helpful to help, help you out getting started. They've got a, a great um, repository on GitHub. They've got their console, their CLI. It's all open source. So you can kind of see how those are made. And again, that is a, you know, they're a really open company. And it's it's so nice to see within within the community, the, the open source community, that big tools like this have been used for one, to run a business. But they're also sharing that uh, code with users to learn from as well. And this is their, their repositories have certainly helped me advance my knowledge so definitely worth checking out uh, that's graph.cool cool so have a great day guys happy coding um if you want to answer any questions i am no trab on twitter that's just barton backwards or leave a comment in this uh, video please subscribe i'll do some more reviews soon and have a great day